Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is another LuxCore Crash Course tutorial video on metallic shaders. If you haven't had a chance, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. And just let everyone know if you missed the recent announcement, we are now Discord Live. So make sure that you check out the video. I just put a card in right here. And join the Discord server and collaborate with us. Okay, so let's jump into Blender here. And this is just the default uh, cube here. And uh, first, what we're going to do, we're going to go over to the Render tab, and we're going to go to LuxCore. And just a quick FYI for everybody, I'm using the 2.51 beta, or the 2.5 beta 1. And I'm going to be rendering using the CPU device. I'm not going to be using GPU. GPU actually has some issues with OpenCL. So if you have an AMD card, you might run into some issues when using the GPU. And I'm not going to go over that in detail here. But just for your own reference, Use CPU to test this stuff out and practice and go to the Discord channel to learn all the newest uh, information about this particular engine on what I'm finding as far as bug reports and anything else. So let's go down to the viewport render and just make sure that the CPU is selected here. Otherwise, you're going to run into some issues. And what we're going to do here is I'm just going to split the panel and I'm going to uh, go into the shading. But before I go into the shading, I want to remind you that in order for you to use LuxCore materials, if you go down to the materials tab over here, remember that if we go to the shader editor, this is using cycles settings. And if you click this button here, it will use the cycle settings, but we want to learn how to use the actual LuxCore material nodes, okay? So you can either click this button which will update this uh, viewport here to show the LuxCore materials, or what I'd like you to sort of remember so that you don't forget that this is how you do this, hit the little minus button here, and then you're gonna click on uh, this right here where it says basic. We're going to click on the Disney node, okay? And we're gonna call this metal, okay? And you'll see here that it just updated this uh, viewport and if we go here, you can see that there is a LuxCore material nodes and a shader editor here. The shader editor will always be the cycles or EV settings and the LuxCore material is going to be LuxCore. So it's very important that you remember that or you're gonna get really confused. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a new object. I'm gonna grab the UV sphere and I'm going to shade that to smooth so that you can see what this uh, material looks like on both of these. And I'm actually gonna go over here and I'm gonna change this material to the metal setting. And over here in the viewport, I'm gonna go to the rendered view so we can see the updates as we do it. And before you really want to start using these, you need to have an HDRI map. And I'm not gonna go into the details on how to do all the lighting and everything really yet, but if you go over to the world properties, uh, click the world light, go to HDRI right here, and then open your HDRI map. Um, you can get these from hdrihaven.com, which I've talked about quite a bit. And we're just gonna grab something that's really easy to see the reflections like this, okay? So uh, this HDR lighting is gonna help us see uh, the metallic look a little bit easier. And if we go over here, take the metallic all the way up to a one, the way that it's shaded completely changes. And you can change the roughness here to a 1.0 if you want, but that's really unrealistic. Or the roughness down to a zero. And you can see that metallic look. And of course, as with anything in these shaders, and this goes with you know Unreal Engine and anything else that you're trying to do, I'm just gonna open an image here. This can be any image that you have. Throw this color into the metallic. You can see that the image will actually I'm going to change this to a 5 so it's a little more obvious. You can see here that an image or any black and white value will drive the metalness of that particular object. So whether you're using procedural textures or you're using images to uh, change something, say you have a rusty sort of uh, metallic look you're going for, the rust may not uh, or paint or something like that that you have on an object may not need to be a metallic look. So you need to make sure that you have something driving what's metal and what's non-metal on your particular object. So I'm just going to take away this uh, metallic, uh, this uh, image here, and I'm just going to delete that and talk about one more setting in here. And that's this right here called anisotropic. Now, if you go into Google and we pull this up and we look at something like... Um, brushed 
uh, aluminum. You can see that it has this particular quality to it. Uh, the bottom of a pan or something like that where basically this is being stretched, okay? So it's like the lighting or whatever the lights are around that particular material is being stretched in different directions. And basically that's what you're gonna be doing here with anisotropy. And for anisotropy to work, I'm gonna throw this into a one here. You can see nothing changed, all right? If I take this anisotropic down to a zero, and then I put it up to a one, nothing's happening. And a lot of people get confused by this. And all that is, is that you actually have to have some kind of roughness here for it to work. So what I'm actually gonna do, I'm going to throw an image. I'm gonna grab an image map here. And I'm going to, and this is all from the Radeon Pro Render Materials Library, by the way. I'm gonna grab one of their image maps that's kind of like a brushed aluminum. Let's see here, where is it? All right, uh, this will work just fine, this uh, brass mat right here. So if I view through this using uh, Control Shift and I left click, you can see that there's that sort of like line quality going on. And if I take that and I throw it into the roughness here and view through this material, you can see that now there's sort of like this roughness quality going on and the light is being stretched in different directions. So if I take an isotropic down to a zero, you can see that it's no longer having that stretch effect. But if I throw this into a one, you can see that now there's a different way that this is being rendered. Let's pull this out of the roughness here and let's just set this to a point two. And if I do that, you can see that there is uh, quite a bit of a change between the uh, non-anisotropic and the anisotropic shading. So make sure that whatever material it is that you're making that's a, me a metallic, uh, check to see if it's anisotropic or not. Usually you can just do a quick Google search to see, or if you have the object in front of you, just shine some light on it or get into a room with some lighting and see if you uh, can see some stretching going on there. You can have some really cool effects with this anisotropic look. The next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna throw a different shader in here to see how other ones work and they behave. So if we go over to the materials uh, properties here and under basic, Go here to Metal, and you can click that button. You can also, inside of the Node Editor here, hit Shift-A, and you can go to Material, and you can select it from here, uh, whatever is you, that you want. Some really cool stuff is in here, but let's do this, um, this basic stuff here. So if we go to Metal, you can see that now there's a new material output and a new node here for our material. To change between these material outputs, click on Active, just like that. And down here at this other one, you can click that one as active too to switch between these. You can also control shift and left click these different ones and that will change the input here of that material output to uh, whatever node is that you have selected. So if we go down here, let's take a look at this uh, node. And you'll see right away there's quite a bit different. Here's the PBR texture that we did for the Disney material here or the PBR node, I should say. Um, and then this material one, uh, metal material one here, you have a color, so you can change this color to whatever it is that you want. But you also have this one here called Fresnel Texture. Let's ignore the anisotropic for now, okay? So if we go to the Fresnel Texture here, click that, you're going to have a different effect that's happening to your object. And this will actually help create a more realistic metallic rendering for you. So I like to use this and use some of the presets here, except for gold. I'm really not a fan of this gold uh, color. It's probably real realistic, but I really don't like the way it looks. Um, the amorphous uh, carbon one has just a sort of like blacker, gunmetal-y kind of look to it. The silver will look like a silver, and the aluminum will look like an aluminum. And the copper is, of course, the best looking thing that you can do. Look how great that looks. So when you have that, you can also go here to color and you can have the reflection color be something else. You can you know, make it something unrealistic or throw an image map in here to make uh, whatever it is, uh, whatever your image is, you know, look like that. So if I take this and I throw it in there, obviously it's not colored, but you can see how it changed the way that the coloring is done for that particular metal. Let's just remove that. And you can see here, there's also a roughness. So if we go here, we set a 0.5, it becomes really rough, um, but that's a little bit too rough. Let's do a 0 0.05, so that looks okay. And of course you wanna check out the anisotropic. So if we 
uh, turn that on, you end up having these two things here. Now here's the thing about this is that it's going to, uh, the U and the V, if you do these together, so if you do a 0.1 and a 0.1, it will create uh, sort of like an, an anisotropic roughness in uh, two directions. But if you set one of them to like, let's say this bottom one to a 0 0.01 and this top one to a 0.2, you can see how that's sort of working there, okay? So you can see that it's sort of going in this direction here, sort of like a cross. And if you change this now to a 0 0.01 and this one to a 0.2, you can see that it's now going in the opposite direction. The uh, vertical here is going, you know, or the V here is going like a vertical sort of effect on this sphere. And if you have the U at a 0.2 and the V at a 0 0.01, you can see that it's now going in the horizontal direction. So depending on the kind of object that you have, one of these is going to work out better for you. Uh, it's really up to you on how you want to have, um, have that look. So check your materials, uh, check the real life examples that you have around you or on Google and see what direction that uh, anisotropic effect should be working. Now, of course, with any PBR material, you want to make sure that if you do have a bump effect that you really want to have in there, throw in a bump node, take the color, put into the value, and then plug that into the bump, and you'll have a bumpy texture on the surface, as well as your anisotropic roughness here. Now, the last thing I wanna show you guys is the mirror. So if we go over here to the uh, material properties and go to the mirror setting here, you'll see that a new material output happens and we get this really bright, really realistic, I guess, looking uh, mirror effect. So if you are doing interiors or you need to have a mirror set inside of your scene, this is what you'll wanna use. You can throw an image map in here to change the reflection color or just change it manually here. And you also have the bump input here. So we could take this and throw that right in there. And then you have a bump uh, texture on there. I didn't go out uh, into the emission here because you really don't need to worry about the uh, the emission properties. Um, it's the same thing like any other emission uh, shading. It's just going to add a uh, lighting effect to it. Um, I also didn't go over the opacity here, but I'll, I can do that really quickly. So if you go here to the opacity, if I set this to a zero, you can see that it becomes completely transparent. And if I set this to a point, oops, a point five, you can see that it's now a ghost metal. Now, what this could do, if you're interested in doing this, you can actually use a, and I'm going to warn you here, I'm going to use a, um, this color ramp is not going to work with uh, OpenCL, so be careful. If I take this, throw this into the color ramp, and I'm just going to view through here real quick. I'm going to take this black value, and I'm going to bring that up to about here, maybe. Okay. Then I'm going to take this white value, and I'm going to pull this down a bit to make it a little bit more contrasted, okay? I'm gonna throw this into the opacity, okay? I'm gonna remove this bump here. And if I view through here, you can see that now there's some very obvious metallic sections, and then there are some that are uh, transparent. So if you're trying to go for like a streamer effect, or you, know, you have like hanging uh, metal objects or something like that, instead of making them all independent, and you wanna kinda like, you know, show it this way. This is one method that you could use. Um, and it saves time on your render so you don't have all those independent objects. So that's one way that you can use the opacity input on any of these to get this particular type of effect. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Make sure that you're subscribed and you like the, the video so that you can keep up to date on all the newest tutorials. And make sure that you uh, go in there and join the Discord server and share your experience and collaborate with us so that we can all share from each other's knowledge. And I will see you next time on DJ Tutorials.